Hi, I'm Jay Goldman, and you are watching Mr. Mobile on Butterscotch.com. Now, we've taken a look at the Nexus hardware, the Nexus One from Google. We are now going to take a look at the Nexus software. It's pretty much the same as versions of Android that we've seen on other devices, so if you're coming to us from the Android world, say you maybe have a Droid or one of the older Android phones, you'll see some really nice improvements. If you're not familiar with Android, you can take a look online. There's tons of stuff about kind of the basics of the operating system and how it works. We're going to take a look today specifically at what changed in Android 2.1, which is the version that ships on the Nexus One, and it's in fact the first phone that has it. So this probably hasn't changed much if you're an Android user. This is kind of the unlock screen. I just wanted to comment on it because I really like this. Instead of using a keypad the way that an iPhone or even a Blackberry with a password does, this one actually uses a, a pattern that you just make on the screen with your fingers. So you just basically play a little game of connect the dots and uh, your phone unlocks. It's pretty awesome. One of the big areas that they focused on in 2.1 was improvements to the home screen. Now the home screen was much maligned in earlier versions of Android. It was kind of awkward to work with. It had sort of a drawer that you kept your app icons on. All of that is gone. This looks a lot more like what you're kind of used to seeing on an iPhone. So you've got uh, a whole bunch of icons that sit on a background. One of the nice things about this is actually you can do live wallpapers in the background here. So I've actually got what they call the grass one. The sky in the background changes color depending on the time of day. So the sun actually sets and rises. Pretty cool. Getting rid of the drawer, they've actually replaced it with what they call the home screen grid. So there's a little grid icon at the bottom here. You can tap on that, and that will actually bring up this grid of all of your icons. And there's sort of a cool 3D effect here. So as you drag them up or down, they kind of rotate off the top of a cube at the top of the screen, and, and they come up from the bottom. It's like you're on a giant roll, and the icons are just going by. So that's where you get all of your icons. Now you've got um, actually five home screens now. There used to be a limit of three, so you can just swipe back and forth to switch between the different home screens that you've got there. And there are little uh, dots at the bottom here, so you can tap on the dots to switch screens as well. If you long tap on the dots, it pops up a little card view. This will look quite familiar if you're a Palm Pre user or a Palm OS, uh, Web OS user. You get a bunch of cards here showing all of your different home screens, and you can tap on one, and that will take you directly to them. So navigation on the home screen, much improved in 2.1. This phone has a Snapdragon CPU and it's really fast. And so they've taken advantage of that with a couple of the apps on here. The gallery application particularly got a new look and feel to take advantage of the faster processor. And so you get these kind of piles of photographs and you can um, sort of move around on here. You can drag it back and forth. You can tap on a pile and it'll open up all the photographs that are in it. And you can sort of scroll back and forth on that itself. If you've ever seen a browser add-on called Cool Iris for Firefox, it kind of reminds me of that. You get sort of this wall of photographs and you can zoom in and out on the, on the wall. So kind of a neat gallery application, a big improvement over the one that was on there. Some of the apps that come with the phone didn't get a rewrite. Music is one of them and I think it's probably the one that people were really hoping would. So maybe fingers crossed for Android 2.2 we'll see a new version of the music application. Now one thing I will say about this phone particularly, it's got a narrower screen on it than, say, for example, an iPhone. And one of the things that kind of bugs me about that is actually the on-screen keyboard when you're typing. The keys on the keyboard are actually quite narrow compared to an iPhone in portrait mode. And uh, so I find that I actually make a few more mistakes. Now, I do really like Android's predictive text because it always pops the words up at the top, highlights the one in orange that, you're, uh, that you will get if you hit the space bar. And rather than the iPhones, which sort of sometimes predicts words in advance and sometimes doesn't, this way you've always got them. So it can be quite fast if you're paying attention to that bar at the top and hitting the space bar. The keys are narrower, though, so I find that I make more mistakes than I do typing on my iPhone. And I also find that because in portrait mode, you've got these soft buttons across the bottom on this particular phone, and on a droid, you've actually got the same set of buttons, but they're hard buttons. I hit them quite often by accident when I'm going for keys along the bottom of the keyboard, particularly the space bar and the home button, which is a bad combination because in the middle of typing, you suddenly find yourself on the home screen. So that's one sort of minor quibble that has a lot to do with this phone rather than Android software in general, but I will say that the experience of typing on Android just isn't as refined as it is on the iPhone. That extends to things like turning the phone into landscape mode. So you get the full-size keyboard, which is great, because now you've got both thumbs on there and you're typing away. But the problem is it zooms into the one uh, field that you're typing into. And so you kind of lose context for the rest of the screen. You can't see it anymore. And again, that's you know comparing this to an iPhone. You can still see the rest of the screen. You can kind of drag around if you want to see what the label is on the field that you're entering data into. So not an ideal typing experience. Pretty good for a soft keyboard, though I have to say, much better than we've seen with some of the other phones that are out there that had soft keyboards on them. I, I wouldn't count it against the phone. I would say if you're coming from an iPhone, you may have a, a little bit of trouble getting used to it. Something new in Android 2.1, uh, and particularly on this phone because it is the first one running it, is actually the ability to use the Google's speech-to-text recognition in any field that you see on here. You'll get a little uh, microphone icon that you can actually tap on. 
Tapping on that will let you record something. It will actually send that up to Google server. Google server will make sense of what you've just said, send the text back down to your phone, and you'll be able to just do a search on whatever you've entered. Obviously, we'll require a network connection in order to do this. So if you don't have a cell signal, the search won't work with the, um, with the microphone. You can actually do this in almost any text field, though. So if you want to write a text message by just speaking, say you're in the car and you don't want to type, it will do a reasonably good job of understanding what you're saying. So if you don't need it to be perfect, it's uh, certainly a hands-free way to enter text. And uh, it's something that definitely stands out on the Android platform. We haven't seen that on any other phone. I'm Jay Goldman. This has been Mr. Mobile on Butterscotch.com. Thank you, as always, for watching. And we'll catch you next time.